there are 57 of the Lok Sabha seats uh, that are going to be in the fray in the seventh and the last phase of the Lok Sabha elections. And let's take a look uh, at some of the statistics that we have gathered over the last six phases and when it be a impact showing possibility of what could happen in phase seven and of course the overall pattern that can be built in the basis of which there can be results that can be predicted. Let's start off with phase one where the Lok Sabha elections took place in 102 of these constituencies. And here's a look at uh, Jammu and Kashmir. We had, uh, uh, we had Uttar Pradesh. We also had Maharashtra that went to poll in these constituencies. Phase uh, number two, there were 89 of these constituencies that went to poll. And again, important regions, we saw Kerala that went to poll, which was in the single phase. We also saw Karnataka going to poll over there. We also saw Madhya Pradesh heading to poll over there. Rajasthan was one of the key states that went to poll as well. And also saw uh, Bihar, several of, its several of its constituencies that went to poll. Phase number three, 94 of these constituencies that went to poll. And Gujarat was amongst key that went to poll in a single phase as well. Let's quickly take a look at phase number four where there were 96 of these seats that went to poll and uh, by phase number four there was 50 percent of the constituencies of the seats that had already gone to poll. Phase number five, 49 of these constituencies and by the time you have almost the entire map of the country and the constituencies and states that have already finished voting. Phase number six, there were 58 seats so by the time we had 90 percent of the seats that had already completed their polling. Let's take a look at uh, the phase number seven. There are 57 of these constituencies in the different states, key among them being Jammu and Kashmir. We also see Punjab. We also see Bihar. We also see uh, Uttar Pradesh. We also see Odisha, which are headed to poll tomorrow. Now, voter turnout. In uh, the 102 constituencies in phase one, the voter turnout was 66.14%. Let's take a look at phase number two, where the voter percent turnout came out and uh, it was marginally more than the phase one, that was 66.71%, 89 of the constituencies that went to poll. Phase number three, 65.68% voter turnout. It reduced marginally 94, 94 of the constituencies that uh, were headed to poll. Phase number four, 67.25%, which is in fact the maximum voter percentage that came out to vote in the 96 constituencies in phase four. Taking a look at phase five as well, there were 62. The number of people who came out to vote was... Uh, uh, much lesser as compared to phase four and then phase three and phase two as well. 49 of these constituencies that went to poll in phase five. Phase number six, phase six, 63.37%. Again, improved marginally by about half a percent. 58 of these constituencies that went to poll in phase six. Let's do a comparison and see uh, in phase seven, there were a total of 57 seats. And what happened in 2019 with the seat share, we saw BJP getting maximum of the uh, seats, 27 of them. Congress got eight of these 57 seats that were contested in phase seven. Uh, Trinamool Congress at nine. Uh, BJD in Odisha got four. JDU got three in Bihar. So that's the breakup of the 57 seats in the 2019 Lok Sabha elections in phase seven. And uh, we also see BSP did end up getting two. It was ADS that got two, Shirmini Akali Dal two, Ahmadni Party one. And it was JMM in Jharkhand that went, got one seat. And these are the numbers. Once again, uh, the 2019 seat share of all the prominent parties and also the regional parties in the 57 constituencies. All right, the high profile candidates that are uh, going to be in the fray in the last phase, ultimate phase is Prime Minister Narendra Modi. 
from Varanasi, Uttar Pradesh. She has been winning the seat since 2014. Nishikan Dube, BJP uh, from Gauda, Jharkhand, a key seat that will be uh, that will be tracked during this period. Abhishek Banerjee of the Trimnumul Congress and the nephew of Mamata Banerjee. He'll be fighting from Diamond Harbor in West Bengal. We have Anurag Thakur, BJP Hamirpur in Himachal Pradesh, the Union Minister for Information and Broadcasting and for Youth Affairs and Sports. Vikramaditya Singh of the Congress, he's fighting from Mandi against Kangana Ranaut in Himachal Pradesh. And there you have it, Kangana Ranaut, a new entrant from Bollywood straight to politics and she's fighting from Mandi, Himachal Pradesh against Vikramaditya Singh. We have Manish Tiwari from the Congress, he's fighting from Chandigarh, which is also his hometown. We have Sugata Roy of uh, Trinamul Congress. He is fighting from Dum Dum in West Bengal. We have Charanjit Singh Chani, the former Chief Minister of Punjab for a few days from the Congress. Jalandhar is uh, the constituency from where he is fighting the election. And if you take a look at the voter turnout across all the six phases, 2019 versus 2024, phase one, and there's a stark difference. There's 69.43% of the people who came out to vote in 2019 in phase one. In 2024, it was 66.14%. In phase two, we saw 2019 turnout, 68.77%. It reduced again to about 2%, by about 2%, which was 66.71%. Phase three saw 68.40% of the people who came out to vote. It reduced by 3% to 65.68%. We had phase four where 65.51% of the people came out to vote. And here's a contrast in favor of the 2024 voter turnout because there were 69.16% of the people who came out to vote, which was quite the departure from the previous voter turnout in the last three phases. Phase 5 saw 62.56% of the people coming out to vote and phase 5 in 2024 was also about the same with 62.20% of the people. Phase 6 saw 64.60% of the people coming out to vote in 2019 as compared to a 1% drop of 63.36% of the people who came out to vote in 2024. All right, uh, now that we have the number, the statistics, let's also try to boil it down to what it means, what are the predictions that can be had, and whether voter turnout is then a reflection of how the elections are going to be won or lost by political parties. Joining me on the telecast is Sumit Peer, and quickly a reflection, Sumit, we have taken a look at the numbers. And we've seen in 2019, there is a, a substantial number of people who have come out to vote. It is much more than what the 2024 figures up until phase six signify. Uh, do you see a trend over here uh, that will then enable us to predict the result for 2024 Lok Sabha polls? Thank you for having me on your show. In fact, uh, if you look at the trend, yes, there's a marginal fallout from 2019 to 2024. But the fallout, in my opinion, is for the voters of the India Alliance. Because this India Alliance has not been able to put a consolidated front. There is no PM candidate. Their voter is Hatash, Pareshan and Nirash. He doesn't want to come out and when this 46, 48, 51, 52, 53 degrees of temperature, he or she doesn't want to come out and vote because these are a people who have nothing else, who have nothing in common. If you look at Kejriwal, he told yesterday, after Chunav, there will be no dosti. So that is what we've been predicting. I mean, that is what his statement is yesterday. So when you have such a distorted house, or you have such a broken house, the voter of the India Alliance has not come out because they feel this time India Alliance has no chance. After Ram Mandir, 370, after all the achievements of Prime Minister Modi, the BJP and the NDA's voter has come out and voted in full swing. Well, as the, because the fall of India Alliance voter is there, that is why we're seeing it was not going to help them. I think BJP and NDA will do all-time best. My numbers remain the same, what we have done with you before. And I think Congress will go at an all-time low, man, somewhere less than 50 seats. And if you think between 35 to 50, that is my number for Congress. And that will completely shatter all the myths because Congress is only fighting 325 seats. And out of that, if they're able to do, if they end up doing lesser than what they did last time, that means the party is over, Carter is over, they have cannibalized the party for the so-called India Alliance. And in the end of, at the end of the day, 
कहते ना चार आने की मुर्गी बार आने का मसाला दैट इज वॉट विल एंड अप इज दे विल एंड अप लूजिंग देयर टर्फ एंड देयर ग्राउंड दिस इज वॉट द लो वोट एंड टर्न आउट इज द मोर एंड मोर आई सी पीपल आर एक्टेड मिस्टर मोदी इज एन कन्याकुमारी दीज पीपल आर एर्किंग हेयर दैट कैन रियली टेल यू वट इज द टेम्परेचर ऑन द ग्राउंड दो राहुल गांधी जी टोल्ड सीज वेटिंग थ्री हंड्रेड सीट्स एंड मैं लिख के दूंगा मोदी जी प्रधानमंत्री नहीं बन रहे दैट बिसाइड द थिंग But him doing a sadhana or a, in in Kanya Kumari is rattling the Congress so that they went to the election commission. This talks about Megha Ji. They have lost the game. They have lost the plot. And you will see it just matter of Tuesday, na Tuesday eleven o'clock, eleven thirty ko they will start blaming the EVM. I can predict you eleven thirty EVM will be the number one target. आप और हम होंगे. We will we will we'll watch the drama unfold. Okay, all right. Uh, Advocate Manas Vithapur. the way things have panned out in the run up to the seventh phase of elections and how do you view the narrative that has been built by the opposition and the ruling party which is the bjp bin uh, i see the i feel the narrative is around prime minister narendra modi you like it you don't like it so uh, for bjp it's about narendra modi uh, for congress and opposition is also about narendra modi and and the way the narrative has been so he has become the a uh, focus point in this election and everything revolves around him so there is bjp which is uh, projecting him the uh, the largest in life uh, uh, saint uh, the largest uh, the biggest uh, sanatan dharmi everything which is in his favor and there is an opposition which is saying that he is a dictator uh, if he comes to the power constitution would be thrashed so the narrative is him so this election is completely about him 2014 was corruption 2019 was balakot but 2024 we have to say it's about him so the way he has circulated and the way narrative has been said so voters know only one thing prime minister narendra modi the voters know to know only one thing narendra modi so that's very different which has not happened in the past apart from during the time of indira gandhi during that particular phase it was about indira gandhi and after that it's about prime minister narendra modi and in between there was a huge gap a personality cult was not there in india which was which which was there but not at this stature so he has brought that back and there are, there are people who love love him there are people who can die for him so that's the narrative of prime minister narendra modi and in opposition the biggest uh, uh, a po- biggest point in opposition which is not connecting with the voters would be uh, that they they want to come in power the objective is to remove prime minister narendra modi so this is not a developmental plan this is not a plan a plan which will uh, take you to the next step in the electoral politics to remove one particular person your narrative has to be how do you take india forward and this narrative and and what happens with narrative setting with the prime minister narendra modi specifically is he is talking about vikshit bharat he or at the at the same time he talks about the damages done by the congress so congress counter should have been that what developments we have done in the last 70 years that's why Uh, you are here that's why uh, uh, you you can say all this uh, that narrative has not gone to the people's mind and another 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 thing which he brings out is ram mandir then article 370 then his working style then his meditation so everything whatever happens connects to one particular segment if you don't buy ram mandir you will buy, buy 370 if you don't buy 370 you can buy tourism in lakshadweep if you don't want to take that you can buy, uh, uh, take meditation if you don't want to take that, so he is giving lots of options to the voters so these are the things which may connect with one particular voter segment so that connecting factor in the opposition is not there why because opposition's uniting the favical factor for the opposition is to remove prime minister narendra modi so this is the ultimate goal so this goal is not aligning with the developmental plan for taking india forward there has to be okay. a narrative for example your view is that you want to make sure that our borders are very strong whatever mistakes happened in 2014 to 24 uh, during the regime of prime minister narendra modi this cannot be tolerated like so that clarity the transparency so that narrative the counter narrative the parallel narrative has to come out from the opposition which in this election is messed up okay advocate gyanendra mishra do you concur <coughs> with what advocate manasvi has said that the narrative and do you think opposition coming together and defeating the bjp and that being their sole agenda is sound enough to resonate with the public yeah so mega thank you for having me on your show and am i audible yes you are okay so however hard i try to you know obviously uh, mansavi put a very strong uh, and a long narrative but however hard i try to agree with him 
uh, I, I don't think that uh, there is any point to agree there. See, the whole point is, in my view, obviously, when the election started, the narrative was that India bloc, which is the opposition bloc, was not in its full form. The, because the BJP set the narratives at, an, at a very initial stage of Charles Oge Par, Charles Oge Par, Charles Oge Par. And the alliance, India alliance, was also slowly and slowly trying to build up, you know, the cohesion, the synergy, etc., etc. But as the election progressed, you will see through the different phases, you will see the narrative completely shifted from the char soke par and uh, you know all that to a situation where on many number of seats almost more than half of the seats there is a direct fight now between NDAs and alliance so there was a clear cut shift in the narrative you know as far as the and to say that the opposition alliance only narrative that they said was to remove Mr. Prime Minister Modi and there was no alternative uh, agenda what said is I think an arguments and fallacy because when you look at even only the Congress manifest <laughs> Okay, Advocate Ganendra, uh, you're, not, you're not audible to us. I'm not able to hear you. Uh, we'll try to get that connection fixed. But uh, um, yes, Manasu, you want to make a point? As Ganendra Ji's connection is internet, as well as India Alliance's connection is with the people on a, on a lighter note. But, but, uh, but my, my major point is, uh, what happens here is, there is another thing also which I would want to touch base is, the kind of maturity, I don't know what seats will be turned out for Congress, but the kind of maturity and a big brother uh, step Congress has taken in this by aligning and giving opportunity to regional uh, political parties, that's also massive, which has not happened uh, in the Indian politics because Congress has largely been our largest party uh, 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 pre-2014. So this narrative and maturity which has been shown by Congress, I don't know the vote, vote share or the vote bank which is going to be turned out, or it would be a great political lesson again for the Congress and the opposition uh, uh, parties. That is something which will come to know only after uh, Tuesday. So, but the reality is, but this maturity can go a long way for Congress if they're consistent. Now, with the consistency factor is, if they lose, as, as what uh, Sumit Bhai said, the entire cadre will be completely decimated to a new le level low. And I don't think after 10 years of co continuous losses, how will you motivate your cadre? How will you take them up? and make sure that they fight, the, the fighting spirit goes out. And also the money bank also is very less. After this particular election, I don't think if they lose uh, with considerable seats, uh, uh, lesser than 2014, uh, 2014 and 19 and, or, or, or equal to them, I don't think people would want to give their money to Congress and other political parties. So that could also be very okay. tempting for parties to okay. sustain. Okay, okay. Sumit, so, uh, you know, uh, there was... Uh, the former Prime Minister of our country, Manmohan Singh, he has come out and made a statement that uh, it, it doesn't, uh, you know, behoove the Prime Minister of the country uh, to build the kind of narrative that he has. And he is obviously referring to his comments with regards to the Mangal Sutra and Bache Peda Karne Wale or infiltrators and even talking about how people with more number of wives, two number of wives, or four number of wives, are, are the ones who are going to be benefited by the wealth distribution survey or the inheritance tax. So, uh, and, and this has been the counter that has been given by the BJP time and again is that it is, it is the Congress uh, that is actually appeasing the Muslims under the garb of secularism and the BJP and the Prime Minister are only reflecting it and letting people know about what they're up to. Megaji, you're absolutely right. You see, as 1.2 billion Hindus who live in this country and around 0.1 billion who are across the world, when Rahul Gandhi comes and says, I'm financial survey, then will redistribution hoga. Then we'll assess everybody's wealth. If you want to do my financial survey, what do I have? I will have maybe a house. I will have some gold with my wife. I'll have some money in the bank. I'm not any industrialist. I'm not rich. 
राइट लाइक मी देर आर मिलियंस एंड बिलियंस ऑफ पीपल हु वॉट वरी भाई ये कराना क्या चाहते यू वॉन्ट टू कम एंड काउंट द बैंगल्स ऑफ माई वाइफ यू वॉन्ट टू नो हाउ हाउ हेवी इज आर मंगल सूत्र so usually when what do you mean by doing the financial survey of everybody what do you want to do distribution of the wealth and on the top of that when manmohan singh ji is on record saying that minorities are the first right of resources of this country especially muslims oh right so when i add up these things i as a hindu and i as a devout uh, are a patriotic indian i am concerned i look up to my tallest leader say man my say modi ji what is your stand on this so modi ji has to reply rahul gandhi because i am concerned i like me are billion people are concerned they saying sir kindly reply what is your stand on that so when he replies that it's so they see a problem in that now if you look at sachar committee report you know that uh, communal violences bill it was completely one sided now if you look at who who cried at the batla house encounter who had tears in the eyes at batla house encounter sonia gandhi ji right so there is a pithora of disasters which congress has created and inheritance tax was there it was removed just so that Ra- rajiv gandhi get can inherit all the money from her uh, late mother indira ji without paying any tax so when you know all these such disasters talked spoken about and let me address another thing look mega ji the country has finite resources i have one It's wife and one or two kids if somebody has four wives and eight kids so he is going to eat away the resources of from which ideally belong to the people who have one wife and two kids okay logically and look at muslims have grown at 43% hindu population has reached 8% so if hindus have a legitimate concern over there i'm not trying to make it uh, demeaning but if somebody is uh, sexuality is hypersexual and the other people cannot be paying price for that if somebody can okay. produce, what kind of condition okay. 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 uh, last uh, thing i just this one point quickly one thing. Quickly, 15 seconds i have seen seconds. i have seen rongias with children they were the infiltrators batis bachche bachche wale rongia families maine dekhe they are the infiltrators which prime minister referred to not the common man of india yanendra ji would you want to uh, respond to what uh, Uh, what sumit they said no i don't see there is anything to respond to because obviously you know he is speaking in the language of his leader and is obviously uh, only the conjecture misrepresentations and lies into it when he says that uh, uh, prime minister manmohan singh says that the minority and the muslim has the first right on the national resources i don't think there is a, everybody has seen that speech there is multiple channels which is running that speech and he has no where said that the minorities only has the uh, right on he was speaking on and if anybody can play that here to so the when you speak lie when you spread canard and when you say <coughs> that if someone says that the minority has a right uh, on the social side and 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 the first right and a response to that if you talk that they are infiltrators they are jada bachcha paida karne wale they are topi pehnne wale so 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 i don't see how this is a counter argument to that the counter counter argument to that could be the data the counter argument could be on the facts the counter argument would not be by demeaning and degenerating and 20% populations who have an equal citizenship right with this country equal loyalty to this country and the part of this country so to say that if the one prime minister says that as a minority they have the first right and in response to say the current prime minister should say that they are bachcha paida karne wale they are infiltrator okay okay, okay. I, 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 so, I, yes, I don't yes, understand yes, sumit, yes. yes. yes sumit yes let let sumit let sumit respond to what gyanendra said let me answer you sir with due respects first of all yes. infiltrators were referred to rohingyas and the people who have been infiltrated from bangladesh for the world bank he did not refer to any muslim now no no muslim word used kiya this is again a canadio trying to spread point number 2 we have discussed on news like <laughs> mega sharma ji was anchor isn't the muslim population in this country up by 43% isn't the hindu population down by 8% ye bhi maine ghar mein chhapa kya ye bhi ghar mein data to maine banaya nahi this is the official data which is out so when these things are coming in the open forum and you don't want a uniform civil code you want to have your liberties you want to have rights you want halala to go on you want triple talaq to go on you as congress you want to get triple talaq back you want to get 370 back you want to start talking for trade with pakistan you want to do anything you want to get pfi back 
So is there anything which is a disaster of this country you don't want to have okay. get back? Okay. Yes, sir. Has the jurisdiction okay. of fifty? Okay. 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 Advocate Manasvi, you know another point. Just two days. Just two days ago, uh, uh, Jairam Ramesh, after being okay. reticent because several times this question had been posed, that who is the prime ministerial face of the opposition if India Alliance were to win? And finally, he has broken his silence and said it's natural. The party that gets the maximum number of seats. is going to be allowed to put their candidate as the prime ministerial face now how cogent is this plan and will it work for the indi alliance partners in it it can work for them but but the, but the narrative uh, set by the bjp is that ki ek saal ek prime minister rahega dusra saal dusra prime minister rahega and their narrative reaches out to people in a much stronger pattern and they believe that ki aise khichdi sarkar nahi chahiye and khichdi sarkar jab uh, बोलते हैं तो दैट मींस कि दैट सरकार कैन बी ब्रोकन आउट एनी टाइम बट दैट हैज नॉट बीन द केस एंड इट कैन वर्क आउट एंड इट कैन वर्क आउट इन अ बेटर वे फॉर द कंट्री लिव इन यूपीए टू एज वन ऑफ द एग्जांपल्स बट अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट इन द पास्ट किसी सरकार हैव वर्क एंड कैन कैन वर्क आउट मोर मोर इंपॉर्टेंटली व्हाट आई वांट टू से इज प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी इज द थर्ड चाइल्ड ऑफ इज द थर्ड चाइल्ड हिमसेल्फ ऑफ द सिक्स ब्रदर्स एंड सिस्टर्स सो एंड व्हेन ही स्पीक्स आउट ऑल दिस ज्यादा बच्चे पैदा करने वाले मंगल सूत्र व्हाट हैपेंस हियर इज what narrative we are setting for the present batch of voters and there is a new low in indian politics this is the discourse happening in our country and when the head of indian politics speaks such language and people are gala about it and people say it's okay mangal sutra ki baat kharab kar rahe hain chalta hai aap zyada bacche paida karne wale baat kar rahe ho chalta hai when he says that vikasit bharat 2020 47 that's where i would want my prime minister to speak about but when he talks derogatory things i would not want my prime minister prime minister or the or a long tall uh, leader like him should speak such way so this is where the prime minister should also understand that the narrative said because he is an inspiration when he goes for meditation people would love it there is no i don't think there is anything anything negative about it but when but he says how, how, the, how does how does a leader then communicate if there is in your uh, manifesto if you mentioned that the minorities in the country are going to be provided with reservations if 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 something of the sort is already prevalent and practiced in karnataka by the congress government if no. there is already a mention in your manifesto that there is going to be muslim minority reservation that is going to so be provided for government uh, contracts for government contracts like building of roads and yeah. building of houses uh, how else how uh, how else can a leader communicate I, the same that listen there is alleged muslim appeasement being done by the opposition done by the congress and there have been references been made and instances been cited from the previous upa governments and what they have been up to now this is very valid with what you asked par iska jawab aisa nahi hota na ki mangal sutra chheen lenge zyada bacche paida karne wale ab ye simply bolyo ki muslims ko appease karne wale ye log they are going to give more reservations to you so they, your jobs your wealth would be distributed with them that could be the narrative ab aise thodi bologe you will not say ki mangal sutra chhin lenge this is not ye gali politics nahi hai we are the largest democracy of the world and we can show the light to the world and our speeches can be uh, recorded by various countries and this these things should not be ha have happened we should say that if prime minister narendra modi is doing something great we, we can congratulate him but if his speeches are derogatory we should say that it is derogatory we we can't have a uh, one way thing that unhone mangal sutra china bola and it's okay unhone bola zyada bacche paida karne wali ek kaum hai that's okay it should not go uh, that way it should be like unhone ye cheez galat boli and sath mein viksit bharat ki baat kare that's amazing okay. sath mein unhone jis tarike se Sumit, infrastructure banaya that's Sumit, amazing so maybe you would like to respond quickly yeah, yeah, i have 30 definitely. seconds before a wrap up yeah, definitely definitely ma'am i'll you know first and the most important point is 40% up 8% down that is the data out that is not my creation iran converted zoroastrian culture over converted in 37 years egypt 32 years syria 22 years lebanon aapke aur mere samne 40 saal see the plight of hindus in pakistan see the plight of hindus in bangladesh see the plight of hindus in afghanistan as a hindu as a not a padha likha hindu main to gaon dehat let me let me ask one question i need to be i need to be address in the language jo mujhe samajh aayegi you know good language and all is fine but i need to be communicated in my approaches to be understood in the language okay okay, okay. No, all right all right Speaking fair enough this is not a problem fair enough all right no, i'm no, out i'm, 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 I'm out of time i'm out of time i i i thank my panelists for joining me and sharing their views and uh, thanks for watching newsx for more such videos subscribe to the newsx youtube channel hit the bell icon